we are and we are live good morning everybody on the flat plane it is the 13th of the 10th 2016 or 10 13 2016 if you're in america um, i'd like to welcome um, nathan oakley this morning uh, to our uh, hangout we'll Hi there, good morning nathan <laughs> morning how are we on the flat plane today beautiful it's a sunny morning everything's hunky dory mate yeah, it is a beautiful morning, I have to admit. Um, I've got some music coming from somewhere, rather funky. It's not me, mate. Can you hear that? No, it must be coming through your beautiful headphones you've got on there. It is, it is. It's an advert on my channel. There you are. Ah, I have there you go. I have well, muted myself. The fortunate thing about headphones is if you mess it up and you do have the live stream running, as so long as your guest yeah. talks as well, you can sort it out and no one knows the difference. But of course, you've told us all now. <laughs> morning all in chat um, so yeah, so yeah. A little, little catch up hey martin what's been yeah going just on? catching up i've been off about last four days taking it easy and trying to catch up on myself first first break i've actually had since i've been uh doing flat earth in over a year so it was needed and um i've got my kit sorted out <laughs> thanks at last Tell us, tell us, you got a nice swanky new PC. Tell us yeah, all about it. I got a new PC. I'm, I had a bit of trouble up there in the <laughs> in the PC world, actually. Um, the, the manager uh, was giving me a bit of a dog's life. Wouldn't sell me the display model for three hundred and fifty pound cash, Nathan. I've never heard of that in my life. Um, I was going to send a letter to the head office of PC World and complain that they're not taking cash for um, X display models. Two weeks off November when the Christmas stock is coming in um really not good so i ended up buying this because it had um well it clocks out at four gigahertz so that will do me fine <laughs> excellent yeah it's got it's got a bit of memory and um it's got the power i need to do google hangouts to take take this into the future awesome you're well, looking really clean martin your picture's beautiful yeah i am um, been up since early um getting just trying to get positive really because um <laughs> when you're a flat earth trench soldier you start to get a bit worn out start to feel yourself getting a bit you know really and that's the stage i was getting at yeah i was getting a bit worn out a bit burnt out i think oh, maybe a week ago on the weekend yeah I, I feel much more look at the difference four days off i feel brand new i feel like i've had a year off i feel i've been away on the coca coca cabana for the last week i come back brand new it's only been since the weekend it's only thursday <laughs> It's just flat earth time, you know, it goes so quick and four days seems like a year, honestly. It's like, whoa, you know? Flat earth time. Yeah, flat earth time, exactly that. Um, so I've just been trying to catch up on um, what's been happening. Um, not too much at the moment. It seems to be a bit of a bit of a lull. Well, you watched The Principal? Um, um, yeah, I've been finished watching it last night. I was just going through my second time. It is a superb film. I've never watched it before. But... Um, when you get some of the main physicists, Mitch Kaku and Lawrence Krauss and Max Tegman, admitting that basically we're on a flat plane, which they have, and they do. Now look at that there, Earthrise, a film. Okay, now that's not the same as the still image, is it, that we see with a black you're not, image? You're not sharing anything with me, Martin, so I don't know. Oh, I'm not, am I? Okay. I'll have a look and see if it's going out live when you do share it. All right, give a second. <laughs> yeah, Earthrise I've seen. I remember Earthrise. Um, yeah, but Earthrise film, not the photograph. The photograph has been proven to be a cargo cutout. No, I remember but the film. life. Yeah, there's not much of them. Not much of it out there. It's only about 15 something seconds of this. And it's I, I I just don't know how that that footage is available of the missing original NASA footage. I wonder how that happened. Did they take screenshots? Well, we've got we've got none of the original footage from the first moon landing have we that's all gone well no this is this bit is not the original can you see that there yeah well that's your, your earth rise now they have a photograph of the same thing and saying there's a black bit of cardboard superimposed around that and it's early photoshop is it true it's i don't Steve, know but wasn't it that, that exposed this first off so he yeah did it in photoshop put a you know I think he raised the contrast level and basically showed that there's a box around it. In other words, it's been superimposed in on Photoshop. No other way to describe it. But of course, they've since gone back and, and made adjustments so that you can't do that anymore. If you were to do that today and pull that image from the NASA website, 
there wouldn't be a black box around it. It wouldn't show up on Photoshop. It was just Rob Skiba did it, and at the time they were very lazy and hadn't adjusted anything. Hmm. Okay. Do you want to? Do you want to I, I, I wondering, um, Did you want to stop screen sharing? Yeah. Um, Tim Peak. Now, somebody's I suggested not too long ago. How come he comes back from the um, space station and he hasn't been on telly? No documentaries. No press conferences. Nothing. Now it was put to me that all oh, right, which because. He lives in Houston, Texas. Well, to me, he, he, it doesn't matter if he's on the frigging moon. He would still come public. He's just come back from apparently six months from the ISS. Where's his documentary? Where's his press conference? Where's his 10 minutes on the one show? Where's Where has he been? It makes no sense. Has nobody noticed this? Well, I think that's what they hope, isn't it? That basically nobody will notice or nobody will kick up a fuss even if they do. Yeah, so he doesn't, you know, fall apart on the lies when people are questioning him is what it is. He yeah. probably goes into a training thing where he, he learns to lie and not mess up the same way Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin and Collins did on that interview about the Stone of Corona when they're all like twiddling their thumbs and looking really guilty. We've done something really bad. We've told a big one. <laughs> I, think she, I think it was Jaron put out a video recently showing the contradictions between the astronauts' testimony when they come back, some of them saying that it's... Uh, uh, really white, flushed out, you know, washed out, it's so bright with all the stars, others saying it's completely black, then the same astronaut saying it's completely black, I know. contradicting I know. himself. Also the inconsistencies with the Van Allen belt, um, some been through it, um, some think they've been through it, and others, oh yeah, oh I've seen the particles going through my eyelids, um, that would be the, uh, you know, the cosmic radiation or neutrinos or what have you. They were and they all contradict one another. Don't they collab corroborate their story, these people? Fuck them with them. <laughs> truth and lies. I mean, the, there's probably elements of truth in some of this NASA stuff. Um, there's got to be because some of it's what? based on actual observations done from observatories. Yesterday, when Collins came out in that, in that conference and said, oh, well, I don't remember actually seeing any stars. No. I thought, now why would he fucking say that? Would it be the fact that he wants to make the permeate the lie to make it sound like, oh, we're not liars? I wouldn't have said that otherwise. A double bluff. Or um, it, it crossed my mind. Did they actually believe that they went? Were they subject to some sort of hypnosis? Did they actually stick them in the same way they done on that British television program, where they stuck them on that spacecraft, made them believe that they were in outer space? Um, I can't remember it now. I did for a second. It was a channel Space five. Cadets, yeah. Johnny, so, Johnny Vaughan hosted it, and basically they they simulated taking them to space. And at the end, the climax after a lot of conditioning hmm. was them sticking them in a giant simulator with an IMAX theater um, yeah. inside it and a great big audio system. The priceless bit for me was that for the most part it worked, oh, yeah. even though the sound failed. So when they did the grand finale, they had them in the simulator. They had an audio glitch, and they literally were taking off. With no sound, oh, and they just what passed happened? it off. You know, these people were so susceptible to being duped that they just passed that off as well. It didn't. It still didn't twig. They still took them up and showed them the Earth from space. I remember the conversations going on. It really doesn't feel like we've even taken off. Doesn't it feel like we're on the ground? On the ground? What? You mean spinning at a million miles an hour on the ground? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> still. Um, but, I mean, you might be yeah, right. Yeah. Maybe, I, mean, I, I toyed between it loads of times. You, you, we'll never probably. Oh, you have, yeah. Right. Well, I considered how would that be possible? Would it be partly hypnosis, drug induced, to the extent that when they're getting out of the limb in a studio, they actually think in their spacesuits that are on the moon and they actually think the three days that they've traveled there. Would that be possible? Um, the journey there, could they be in a blacked out studio actually thinking they're in transit? Now, to me, I'm giving it some good thought. I think, Christ, they could actually do that. So maybe to some extent that they thought and had doubts because the, the, the myth at the time was something happened to them on the moon. They seen something and it made them a little bit mentally ill when they come back. That was the story when I was a boy. Uh, Neil Armstrong went funny. He came back from the moon, seen something. And then they said it was civilizations. And, you know, when Buzz Aldrin will uh, give you the myth that there was aliens and they followed us all the way there. I've seen no fucking stars, but you've seen a UFO following you all the way there. Okay. I've got to give you some clarity, a couple of bits. So they said they didn't see any stars from the surface no. of the moon because no. they most definitely did see stars when they left Earth's atmosphere, which is a bit mm. more pertinent at the moment with Bob um, sending yeah. up this balloon to look for stars. But they use star charts. They had, you know, they've got this on NASA footage. I've seen it. In fact, I took a chunk of it and put it on one of my channels. I forget which. 
but they sh they used star charts when they were navigating, so they definitely saw the stars. But specifically from the surface of the moon was what um, um, who was it? It was the star uh, sky at night guy, um, Patrick. Moore. Uh, Patrick Watt. Patrick yeah, Watt. when he was quizzing them, he was specifically quizzing them about what they saw from the surface of the moon, and they said, "I don't, I don't recall seeing any stars." I think was Colin's response. He was obviously yeah. circling in the limb, though. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. circling in the limb, apparently. But that doesn't ring true either. A man on his own for all that period of time, um, just in orbit. So he comes around the dark side, around the lit side, to the same location as where they are. But there's, there's two answers, isn't there? There's one that says, no way. I can't no way, perceive no. me being so... I can't perceive any sort of indoctrination convincing me of what... I, part two, saw happen on Channel 5. So on one side of it, I go, no way. I just can't. I couldn't be duped like that. There's no way. Well, we did. We got duped with a bomb. Moon. But then you know that they whittle down, what is it? I don't know, 4,000, 5,000 applicants down to four. You know, they're looking for a very specific, specific type of person. They tell you these guys are the elite of the elite. Then you see them on TV and they're proper, where's my chewing gum? Yeah, you know, yeah. they, they don't nice look like the sharpest tools let's be honest you know, no, we did have the conversation um, that night i remember i watched it back as i downloaded it back a few months ago and they, they did have serious doubts but because they've been told by strangers um that of course this is real that was enough to kill the doubt just trusting people so we, I, we know though they must be lying we know they haven't gone to the moon we, we know, know they haven't left earth's atmosphere you know men don't go above what what could be considered in nasa terms low earth orbit you know men don't go beyond that well they're, they're, their maths contradicts they say the iss is in the um in the troposphere but the conditions of the troposphere it's impossible for anything to exist in now i discussed this yesterday with my son he's coming up um sort of a little bit better with flat earth with me <laughs> at the moment but i said look they don't get up rockets can't get up there it, it has sort of been proven by the nature of a vacuum um, it has a sucking by nature, sucking action by nature. Um, a rocket um, working on turbines also works on a sucking nature, and both um, opposing forces wouldn't work. Rockets can't work in space. Then I saw, I saw a great example from a guy called We Are Inventions, and I love cars. He used a turbocharger as an example, and I'm going to explain it the way he explained it. So you've got a turbocharger, and all the turbo does is it works off the exhaust gases to run a turbine to blow air off the engine. Now, when you first run your engine, it has to charge up the space in the tube. Now, the bigger the tube, the more it would have to fill that space, the longer it takes, and anybody who's driven a turbo car would know that you get turbo lag. So the bigger the tubes, the more turbo lag you get because it takes longer to compress that space in the tube. So you make the tube bigger still, and it would take even longer to compress the tube wow. and then okay. blow air on the engine. If you then go to an infinite amount of space for a vacuum, you never get to the point where you can compress that, wow. which is another way of being able to actually look at or visualize how you can't charge a vacuum to produce thrust it's a nonsense <laughs> and when nonsense. you're charging up your turbo pipes the bigger you get the more the longer it takes what well, if you went to infinity you'd never charge yeah. it oh my god i didn't even look at it from that aspect that's so true it's a great example we are all inventions i think it's a we are all inventions yeah no i've seen him i, I follow him i'm sure to him um he says now that okay i'm building a vacuum chamber i build i put this to the test because he's making rockets um he builds his own rocket motors he builds you know using his own handmade um explosives so what have you because they're a bit pricey these uh these rocket motors um he's got these amazons they're proper bought ones he sends them up we've done it we've you know, you, you operate it on an ignition system. Um, it deploys a parachute and flows gently back down. I wanted to put a camera on there. I wanted to get this done. Um, so he's going to make a vacuum chamber and he's going to allow me to film it for the flat earthers. Wow. <laughs> so, wow. wow. Um, he's going to do it. He will do it. Although he gives up on a lot of stuff. We're halfway through um, a 3D printer that's been in the bedroom for the last six months because we've run out of servos. <laughs> oh. Well, yeah. let's not let's not pin too many hopes on it though. But nice idea. Hopefully, it'll come off. Well, they're not as difficult as you might think, and the servos came from old computers. 
and it's quite precise and he's very good at it but it's money he's just laying there but this um vacuum chain but he's adamant on doing it he wants to prove me wrong the rockets can work in a vacuum oh that'd right. be interesting well you can never replicate a, a proper true vacuum I, I, with no sides you know it's the absence of any sides so you know i don't know it's one i've, I've thought about it a few times i've seen a few people who've talked about the problems yeah. of actually replicating it um I don't know. Well, more power to him. You know, why be skeptical? Great, wonderful. Let's hope he debunks you. <laughs> it's still did prove me wrong. I'll film it. And I said you'd be doing a massive service to the flat earthers because I've only ever seen the one. Well, the information presented by Brian Mullen and I think Propaganda Destroyer tried it once in his garage, but he, he did a bit of a fail. Couldn't get the air completely out. So yeah, I remember that as well. Yeah. Um, so that's the only time I've seen that experiment. So it would be really intriguing. That's kind of a killer if you can prove the rockets cannot work in a vacuum. It's a bit of a killer. Mm -hmm. um, unless, of course, there's no vacuum up there because we've never been up there. We have no way of knowing. But it's an infinite vacuum, isn't it? Because if you, yeah. if you take a rocket in a vacuum, you, you're, you're filling a sealed vacuum, so a big chamber. Mm. As soon as you release the rocket's gases into that, it's no longer a vacuum anyway. No. So it's only no, when no, you... No talk about the infinite vacuum of space that suddenly it will never ever work no. or at least that's how i understand it no it makes sense to me but, but the way they, they say that the, the there's enough energy locked in one square inch of space uh, to destroy the entire universe now how can they surmise that i've tried to dig into it and i've tried to work it out they're just going on the relativity theory of e equals mc squared and the energy and that will be released exponentially by the speed of light uh, making and destroying the entire universe now they keep coming out with these, <laughs> these fallacies. sounds terrifying. <laughs> it sounds terrifying i'm just thinking about all the things that i grew up with that they wanted to frighten you with you know yeah. nuclear war um oh you name it plagues oh god there's so many and they're still doing it now and they're ramping it up with the fear um yeah. there's a lot of people thinking world war three may be on the horizon um, time travel time travel has been brought up this morning um on the internet um flat earthers are talking time travel oh no robots from the future i wonder where um, i have been really interested in time travel through my life i have a massive interest in it and i've looked into the montauk project and the philadelphia experiment and all these different time travel experiments but to be honest the science behind it is is impossible with the machine <laughs> if it's possible it's um it's not with anything to do with a machine it would be um higher elevation and self-projection or something like that i don't think there's a, a machine that would take you into the future how could that even be no most definitely not and the reason we've got these ideas is because we've had them introduced and previously. we've been programmed with them we know about it because we've been shown it you know when we have the ideas presented to us by science we've got a whole bunch of stuff to pull from and where does it come from oh the media the tv the cinema the radio i'll give you some evidence stories. of this they, um, i got pictures here they um basically they, they're showing you images in hollywood of what the earth would look would look like 20 or 30 years before they actually got out there yeah from and universal they, so yeah yeah, yeah. A few, when they i think it was 50th anniversary universal anything you buy that's a, a dvd or blu-ray from universal that's a 50th anniversary it has the full sequence from the plane going around, you know, it's obviously not to scale. You've got this in real terms, if the globe was real, a enormous by by wing by plane going around the globe. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's the, that's the first one. And I think, like you say, that was probably 19 mid 1920s or something. Long before they even got even a vague notion of what it should look like. They've got a pretty good scale accurate representation being broadcast to the nation on every single cinema release from they Universal. Didn't they didn't even change it. They just kept it the same. Now that should be telling people something. If they're showing us, you know, all those years before 1969 that they're showing us that, that should tell people something. Well, you know, the the most, they, it's the most chemical induced a chemical inducing part of any movie so I, when i was working in hi-fi and flogging mm. systems you'd only have to put the intro on to a movie that introduction you know dun dun, dun, dun you know one of those yeah 20th century universal it didn't matter 
they were the eye dent was the most dramatic bit. It had the best sound. Yeah, you know, you can just picture the THX or something. You know, and they really did grip you. Well, you imagine that the effect mm. that has when you see a fifty-foot globe. You know, coming towards you out of. I, out I, I of remember head. thinking it. I remember thinking, oh wow, we live on that. But why doesn't it look real? And I've never thinking it with all of these geography books. I've got like the, the CGI um, sort of relief. You can see they're green. They've got the mountains. They're relief. And they're meant to look like the globe. But they're completely. So I, I've had this question. Why why can't they show us anything real for many years? But I couldn't link well, they, it. Because it's, we've been tricked. So they've used yeah. the prevention of disbelief. So when you're at the cinema and you see Superman flying backwards to turn the world the wrong way yeah. and reverse That's time. Your mind knows that's false. Now, the fact that you're actually still being predictively programmed with religious iconography, that's besides the point. The image of the globe itself is part of the suspension of disbelief. Mm. But when you leave and see it in a textbook, your brain won't disassociate the fact that you've watched it on a TV screen. You've never oh. seen that point of view. You just go back to it as a reference. It's no longer a suspension of disbelief. It's no longer fiction because look, here you are. It's in a textbook, and you're told it's real. Well, why would you have any other anything other than what you've seen at the cinema on the TV to pull from? You won't. You'll just go straight to that as reference. This matches. I've seen it before. It's been enormous on a screen. Why wouldn't this make sense? Hmm. I tell you what, I did notice last night while I was scrolling through. Um, Max Argent was interviewing a, a merchant marine, um, somebody from an American merchant marine. Well, I'm really intrigued on that. I wanted to hear what he had to say, obviously. Um, but it got taken down. I saw that. Mm. I saw that yesterday. Did it get well, taken? I, I put it on and um, I put it on last night at about one o'clock, um, and it said um, deleted by user. Uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe you just changed maybe the amount of time. And then it or something i don't know but i certainly watch that that happens yeah they are in between when it's loading up thing yeah okay maybe that happened maybe maybe i don't, I don't know but i certainly watched that particular strange world um I, was, I, don't, I think it was released a couple of days ago i watched it yesterday yeah i really want to want to see that what was he talking about curve i suppose and lack thereof usual stuff it was a good episode they had a bit of a mailbag at the end as well I didn't actually watch all of it. I think I watched an hour and 15 minutes of it and then I got distracted by some accounts. So I've still got the last little bit to watch. I'm hopefully going to be chatting to Mark a bit later. He's got a bit of camera issues. I was He was um, pouring his heart out about his driver issues that he was having on Skype yesterday because he's, oh, he's yeah. talking about using other people's equipment and you know Mark. So he's obviously been fiddling. Or maybe oh, not. Yeah. I won't assume that. Maybe he just didn't, it didn't work. He was trying to <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but he's having camera issues. But with a bit of oh, camera right. magic, I'll be chatting to him later about some of the statistics and what they mean. Yeah, I'm quite intrigued. Uh, you know, all their millions, I can't work out how that's happening. Now, there's no other flat Earth movement on planet, on plain Earth, is there, that I know of? <laughs> Not that I know of, Martin, no. <laughs> no, no alternatives. There's no great great one in Asia bigger than this one. Okay, so it's, it's us then. So how is that many people viewing us? Well, like I say, I'm going to go through it with Mark. I'm hopefully going to find out exactly where he's coming from, where he's got the stats from, what it means to you and I. You know, it, it was something like akin to what we were talking about last night when we discussed doing this show. You know, yeah. how our attitudes have so radically changed in the last 12 months. You can kind of picture 12 months ago not being concerned about being incorrect when you've had half a dozen proofs but they're still fresh in your mind yeah. and you're still you know waiting to be proven wrong potentially or questioning your or doubting whatever mm -hmm. so you're on a little bit more of an edge when people present a potential debunking you know you've got to mm -hmm. really examine it you've got to really scrutinize it you've got to look at all the angles but you're only doing that because you're obviously uncertain to begin with 12 months down the line mm -hmm. you know um, we were, that was it. We were talking about Jaron, Dave Weiss, and yeah, yeah. Um, Dave's mate. I've forgotten his name now. Is it John? I think it was John. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, we both kind of had the same attitude. It was like, oh, it was painful, wasn't it, to watch? You know, the, um, how did Dave phrase this? The, the flight has got more holes than Swiss cheese, but he's holding that as a globe proof. You I, know. Know, I know. Or get Google, Google Earth. Are you stupid? Google Earth. Proves it. There. 
Google Earth. That's what he said. <laughs> so the, the point is, the guy was a lovely gentleman, obviously, and being yeah, a nice guy, he was um, really spiritual. You could tell, but he was still in that mode of ancient aliens. You know, yeah, he, he was alien really of, of panspermia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I talked about this with David Rice, and he was like, "Look, I'm not going to ridicule him or scorn him for this because I was there. I've nice been the same person." So you think, we "Oh, yeah, yeah, fair enough." But what you have to remember with with guys like that, he's on a show with flat earthers. Yeah. He may or may not think he's out of his depth. He may not. He may think he's got a great ground to stand on. But he's there questioning it, debating it. Obviously, he's coming from the point of the understanding that he knows. Well, that's kind of a safer bet if you think you're yeah. right because it's the accepted norm. It's back to us where we were 12 months ago mm -hmm. when you're like, mm, which which side should? Well, it's much easier, like my wife has done, to stand on the side of the globe. It's the accepted rhetoric. Much easier. But he's still on a show with Gerald and Dave Weiss talking about it. So he's obviously right. open to it. You know, right. One man's flat earth fighter is another man's globe denier or however you want to put that. Yeah, I did have a sense that he might be looking at it and thinking about it, you know, because once you do, once you sit down, no matter, I don't think, your level of intelligence, once you realise that everything's presented through the media, the television, books, and when you stand there <laughs> with just your coat on in the street, you like, take a look around, it's flat. Mm. <laughs> There yeah. is nothing to All you're getting is bombarded with, with programming. I mean, you, I don't know how much telly you watch, if any, at all now. Never, I don't. Ever. The last Not thing I watched, and I got caught up in it, was the um, Trump-Hillary thing. And I really yeah, didn't too. want to get caught up. But people were saying, no, we're going to be discussing this and we're going to be discussing that. So I was like, right, so I have to watch the debate, if nothing else, just to see if Dave Weiss is right and they won't be in the same room together, which they were, as far as I could tell. Um, but you know the hype had caught everybody up, and that's its that's its design. And when I had switched off the TV until that point, it didn't affect me one iota. No, I seemed quite stupid when people brought it up. I was like, I don't know, but I don't care. Much better to go, I don't know, and be a happy guy that doesn't care than go, oh no, it's going to ruin the world. Oh no, which one do I pick? Oh no, false paradigm. No, they, they, I, I just don't get it. I really don't. And maybe I'm just deathy biased, terrible. I really don't get it. Why? People won't even look at it or sit there and spend a couple of days looking at it properly um, instead of just discrediting it. Now, I've been trying to work out what the overall view. So I, I Google this morning, Nathan. Flat Earth. Six down after Eric Dubay's new post is Scott Meru. Now, he's on my um, Facebook. He's a I think he's a little bit of a provider. He does minute stuff and all. He's on YouTube. I've seen him around for quite some time. Um, but it's I think you're on here at the moment, Martin, going out. If you want to just click it, either click the camera to you or screen share, because it looks like it's on me at the moment. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Do you see it? I'm just checking the live feed to see if it's going, sharing it. Yeah, I got the live feed though. Yeah, it's there. Okay. <laughs> well, this is um, on Google. It was um, on the main page for the plane. Six down. And he says this, Scott. Uh, Flat Earth is dead. You all better wake up soon. None of this are big flat earth channels or NASA shills even ask the most permanent question. What powers the flat earth model? Where is the power source and what makes the sun, moon and planets, what planets? The ones you've never seen and the stars rotate above us um, without a power source. In capital letters, there is no flat earth model. They are at least, they have at least gravity, lol in brackets, isn't it funny? And none of our enemies, enemies even bring up the North Pole either, question mark. Could couldn't it possibly have anything to do with the hiding free energy slash retaining their control over energy monopolies? No, <laughs> must be just an oversight by both parties, right? Without a power source, um, no, I'm not going to carry on with this, Nathan. This is actually going fucking nowhere. I'm not going to even carry on. That makes no point at all, uh, Scott Meadow, if you ever see this. None at all. Um, power source is irrelevant. Um, we know as much as they fucking do. Nothing. Um, if we can't get up there and we can't examine, we can't design anything on ground to um, uh, these physics. But we are, aren't we? This is what's happening. We're, uh, we're the new age scientists, aren't we? we we're discovering yeah. for ourselves. Well, you have the sun oh, you have. Um, yeah. I mean, no, I want to correct something for Scott Merrow. Number one, there are tons reason. of flat earth models. Every yes. map is a flat earth model if you want to look at it in that way. 
What we don't have is the globe doesn't work. I was just about to say it's after that, Martin. There's loads of flat Earth models. None of them are 100% perfect. There's loads of globe models. None of them work either. There's loads of globes. Not one of them works. So we're about even on that score, unfortunately, if you want to compare globe Earth to flat Earth models. Really? But in terms of which one seems to be panning out better, I only got to follow Globusters and what Cami and Bob and various other people who exactly. are helping them are doing to see that, no, we know how we've been deceived now. They've wrapped the magnetic field lines that we observe and use for travel daily they've wrapped them around a sphere because they curve so it's a logical deception and one that seems to make sense would i've done it myself around but it doesn't it work myself. we aren't on a globe we are on a flat plane we do still have curved magnetic field lines of course we know we do because we use them but well, there you are. i used to think i was right. traveling north well i was when i was traveling north i check on the compass i would have to steer when i was at sea and there's the magnets, these are neodymiums, right? So it's an invisible magnetic wave. So we have to follow and they're curving. So we're actually thinking we're um, going in an absolute straight line when this is happening all the time. It's just well, we taking us. From school, Martin, don't we? Uh, yeah, you know, but people don't look this. You've got, I don't know if you know, Martin, you've got, I think you've got the camera fixed on me at the moment. Yeah. Um, when you were at school, you got iron filings, you poured them onto a, a, a piece of paper, you put a magnet underneath and you saw how the magnetic field lines work yeah. and they curve we know we have magnetism we know we follow it for travel we know magnet magnetic lines curve so to see the logical step they've taken to wrap those curves around a ball and tell you that you're actually going straight on a ball yeah. nonsense then yeah you can see how they've deceived us but we've only got to this step after i don't know 12 months of trying to model flat earth we wouldn't have seen that deception if it wasn't for cami i had no clue how no, they done it how was the most important you know um part to me how, how have they actually managed to do this if we are on a flat plane how do you take that information and turn it into a globe that seems at least on the surface to work well we've got magnetic field lines and they've wrapped it around a sphere that's how they've done it yeah yeah it was really clever really clever, clever. Uh, that, that film I watched, Principal, put things in a new perspective I haven't watched it all that time it's been out what's going on sorry Martin just a sec so no, on your cameras that. below, right, mm. currently you've got a white box around you. Yeah. Just unclick it so there's no white box, and then it'll jump between us when we speak. Oh, okay. okay. So there should be no white box on either. Okay, I got it. Oh, it's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now it jumps between us when we talk rather than it being one or other. I didn't realise. Yeah. Okay, nice. That's right. I didn't for ages. <laughs> anyway, it's working now, guys. Sorry about that. I'm going to have a little nose in chat and check on our uh, peeps, see if yeah, they're happy this morning. Been keeping an eye. There's a fair few people in there chatting away yeah. happily. All oh, right, on right, uh, in the morning. Oh, good morning, Rick, and good morning, Amanda, and good morning, Mac, and Lionel. All good people, indeed. <laughs> yeah, what are, what, what are the news have we got from the flat plane, Martin? Anything else? can't remember our conversation from yesterday now. It seems like a long time ago. Doesn't it? Um, well, I'm just, this principle really taking me back, all these physicists. And, you know, the more I dig into when I look at Michio Kaku, I had a discussion about Michio Kaku yesterday. And um, basically, I, I got all his books. I thought he was brilliant. But I got a picture of him here, and he's got calculus behind him. You know, I can see phi, I can see Amiga, I can see Psi. I can see, recognize some of the symbols of calculus. But this math is only accessible to the few in academia. And this is the math that they make their theoretical assumptions with, that none of us can ever verify unless we're in this position and we can get taught this calculus. So for that token, everything that they're telling us, we can never, ever verify for ourselves. We just have to trust these people, like this guy, Michikaku, who looks sensibly evil to me, um, that it's golden and it's thanked them. And this is the way things are. And this is what people do constantly. And Max Tegman and Lawrence Krauss, why would you believe these people? Why would people believe them? It's beyond me. He says the good people. Yeah, sure is. Yeah. But what else yeah, have you got to Because I know we were, um, this wasn't intended to be a massively long show, just a quick catch up. So I don't know. It is a quick catch up. I was going to call it tomato catch up. But uh, <laughs> no, it's a um, I want to talk about my laptop. <laughs> I'm only really joking. 
Um, yeah, I've yeah, had to... Um, I've got a run of um, unpleasant emails and the rest, which I've just blocked and got rid of. But the reason I looked into them is because I'm quite intrigued in the mode of thinking with the way people think about me. <laughs> um, did you see who come back yesterday, by the way, Nathan? Come back? Who do you mean? Um, on YouTube, um, Russell Brand came back yesterday with the truth. All right. And he had like 10,000 views in 25 minutes. Um, and it was about... Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton and what they were accusations against one another. Um, now, he's, he packed it in last August before last, so well over a year. Um, I thought, oh, he's gone away because he's discovered flat earth. Because basically, it was when everyone who was into conspiracy theories discovered it. Um, so he was definitely in the line to discover it. So I wondered if he went away to uh, get up with the limelight basically so nobody yeah, can ask no, him. obviously discovered something much more interesting which is that uh, we have politicians and that they're really interesting to talk about yeah like donald trump but donald trump actually talks about it alarm bell started ringing when i watched the truth when i started th following him i thought hang on what sort of position are you in are you can just travel to new york and meet donald trump off the off you know just get off a plane go to his hotel meet donald trump you must be one really well connected person now you're only a cheesy hollywood star that's never done a good role and not even that good a comic you only you know joke about your drug past um which is not all that funny and it's just using it as an agenda to get the sympathy of the peeps now i got that back sergeant it's back up and running now i'll watch that later yeah he's just he's, he's, his sole purpose is to involve the kids in politics that's his primary purpose that's his media position as far as i'm concerned you know, yeah, okay. I won't lie, Thomas Sheridan called that way before it happened. So it? Long before the anonymous stuff, yeah, Thomas Sheridan called it. And yeah, to his credit, you know, he didn't jump up and down too much saying, look, I said this, I put this out on air, I said this was going to happen, I knew exactly what he was going to do. But to his credit, he did. Thomas Sheridan called it completely. Uh, he knew exactly what was going on, said what was going to happen, how it was going to play out, and it did play out exactly how Thomas Sheridan said. So it's like, fair play to you. You know what's going on. You know the Matrix well, my friend. Yeah, he does know the Matrix well. I'm picking it apart well myself. The deeper I go, oh dear, oh dear, <laughs> was anything ever true? And then, you know, I got like crazy on my comments saying things like, oh my God, this man is so sad. He actually thinks there are no nuclear weapons. No, I'm not really stating that there's no nuclear weapons because I don't really know. But going on personal experience, I've never actually seen one go off. Never met anyone who gone, seen one gone off. And um, all of the evidence on the internet is rubbish. It's, it's a bit of a rubbish. joke, isn't it? It's one of those, look it is. away um, now. You can't look away now. This. And then it shots to the sailors on the ship, shot back to the mushroom cloud, and all of these clouds are moving at incredible speed, which is basically um, <laughs> time-lapse photography. You can see it clearly when you're watching it now. It's, none of them are real. So, and when I've looked into the implosion technique, I don't think they did it at all. I don't think they have got them. If they had, why hasn't gone one off gone off in the last 75 years? And at the moment, people are thinking that Russia are baiting up for World War Three. You, know, you know, they had a training thing last week, 40 million apparently uh, Russians, which is a drop in the ocean population wise, isn't it? Yeah. What's that, St. Petersburg or Moscow or something? So they had a train where they went into bunkers by all accounts. And I thought all oh, these were closed after the Cold War. Now, that told me that the Cold War was bunk. Investing all our money on all our high-tech um, uh, watching stations, underground bunkers, complexes. You see them all over Britain. There's one not too far from me. Um, they were closed down in about 1990, in the early 90s, after the war came down. Now, that told me all our investment, and it basically the threat just fizzles, but the things are still there. Nobody's... Um, as far as I know, nobody's actually decommissioned these things and they're still pointing at one another. As the story goes, India and Pakistan apparently having a nuclear standoff and have been well, it's doing... A great, it's a great ruse, isn't it, Martin? Yeah. If, you've, if you've got real war, you actually have to destroy a few buildings. You get quite a lot of bloodshed. You know, it's it's a lot of capital damage. It's, it's all loss. Well, if you have a cold war, you can spend just as much money ramping up, building this, yeah. inventing that. You know, you can spend just as much money, if not more, they did you don't spend have to level more. a single building. You can have even more theatre on the TVs, even more, more propaganda, even more hatred, and not a single 
Not a single did. bullet needs to be fired. Crazy, isn't it? And that's exactly what they did. Oh, clever. Oh, cunning. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> I can't even get my head around what they did. It's um, just ooh, beautiful for everyone. Propaganda at its best. Perfect. 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 I was absolutely petrified of nuclear war. I would literally have paranoid moments thinking, oh my God, it's going to be a flash of light any second. Now, um, yesterday. Oh, just before uh, we change subjects, did you see, yeah. um, just, did you see Jungle Surfer's interview with Crow? Uh, Yes, yes, I did. Yeah. That, the nuclear hoax. Nuclear hoax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is what got me thinking on this train anyway, was that interview. <laughs> I watched it a couple of days ago. Yeah, it was quite thought provoking, but I never knew a jungle server. Um, and I subscribed to him and I watched a couple of his posts. I don't think I'll be watching too many more, to be honest with you. Not really. Oh, I love Jungle Surfer. He's like Russian Vince. I mean, he, he's I, not. He's out there, isn't he? He's on a different thing altogether. He's on. on what buzz is he exactly on? Yeah, he's, he's pretty out there. But I mean, the, my favorite YouTubers are the ones that I disagree with as much as I agree with. So Russian Vids is a perfect example of that. Half the time I'm screaming and sh throwing stuff at the screen going, no, you're wrong, yeah, what are you talking about? It's the biblical aspect, isn't it? It's, it's this um, physical character that he keeps going on about. It's really nuts, I know. But I do love the guy and his videos are absolutely brilliant. And he's a nice guy to us. <laughs> Yeah. Well, there's, there's, I think it's Leonard the Jesuit Order was the guy that first introduced yeah. the nuclear hoax, and I think he's taken those videos. It might not even be him. I could just be misremembering, but I think he took all of those videos down. Could have been him, yeah, maybe he, someone else. He took a few videos down when he went quiet, but he's back it now in a big way. But um, I first thought about nuclear hoax ten years ago. I can first conceive it. This is not new. Uh, evolution picking apart. Um, I was on a bus um, two years ago um and it was ooh, it must have been just about three four months before i discovered flat earth but i was still definitely going towards being a flat earther without discovering it i'm on a bus i see two people who seem a bit hippie a bit cool a couple um we start talking and i say look i i don't even think evolution happens you know guys and they went no i it didn't so i i'm on i'm on that train of thought about evolution no nukes and other aspects uh, that are linked with the flat earth um which can't really talk about in britain but these uh, these things were in me just as a flat earth arrived so you know i didn't discover all of these things after flat earth they were already there and then the flat earth just boom oh yeah now it all makes sense oh how did i yeah. miss that my entire life similar for me but with the globe i was fairly well versed with how the globe works and you know it's useful because you don't have to go back like a lot of people who've come to flat earth have got to do relearn the heliocentric system i was talking about this with patricia Steer actually just yesterday in terms of how a lot of flat earthers good flat earthers will detail the heliocentric system in a lot of their videos because they're picking it apart well in some ways that's quite dangerous you know you're actually it is. it's reinforcing the model in some ways you know you're giving a better explanation and a better coherent understanding so to a casual observer, they might come along and just find out a little bit more about the globe and how it works. I can see that. You've only got to end it. a video like that with, well, obviously that's how it works. And somebody literally might get the wrong end of the stick to think that's what you actually mean, literally saying that's how it works. When inside uh, the people who are up, who are well versed with a, maybe a Jaron video or whatever would see that and go, well, obviously he's being sarcastic. We all know it doesn't work. Um, but on the other side, on the other side of that, he spent fifteen minutes explaining a really complicated part of the heliocentric system. People's yeah. attention spans probably five minutes. They might just get the first bits of it that it all works yeah. nicely. And, oh wow, yeah, that works great! Right. I never knew that. Thanks for telling me. No, I know how globe works. Oh, brilliant! Thanks. But I was yeah. trying to pick apart that um, that Inuit fellow that was on David Weiss and um, Jerry's chat the other day. Uh, that John, nice fella. But I, I was considering what he'd like what he was going on for his globe and the, the the reasons were really weak that he had you know it was flights um but then you know flat earth has got a habit of bringing up plane speeds which is not really um had evidence you know we haven't actually got any evidence that planes are scooping off at mac 2 or what well, have you to make up the times that might it, be true martin but what we do know, know is there's there's a lot I know Jaron's going to do a video about this soon, so I'm not going to say too much because, okay. right, there is lots of things awry with those flights. 
let's just put it that way. And Jaron will do a video about this very soon. So okay. I'm not going to steal any of his thunder. Just watch that Jaron video when it comes out. It will be eye-opening, to say the least. Okay. Because um, I have seen the rosters and the speeds, and some of them are anomalous, you know, 980 miles an hour when it's supposed to be 600, things like that, you know. But, you know, when you think it's trying, you know, doing 2,000 miles an hour to make up the speeds, um, then I got trouble with it, you know. Well, uh, no, no. You, I had this conversation with David Rice ages ago. It's like, well... It could be the speeds that are wrong or the distances on the map. Yeah, but back in the summer, I remember a pilot on the news this summer um, and he arrived in Heathrow two or three hours early. Uh, as, oh, what was it? Uh, two, two hours early or something where he said he jumped on a jet stream and it pushed them to Britain that much quicker. So they will use the jet stream as an excuse for popping great distances in short spaces of time. Now I th I'm thinking, what, that many hours? And then I worked out how many hours crossing it was from America. And I thought, hang on a minute. So that's like a third of the time off from jumping a jet stream. So then I started asking myself questions. Hang on a minute. And then when you mentioned vectors, I was thinking, hmm, I wonder well, if they're taking this is magnetic vectors. I, had with, with, I think it was Bob. So if you've got these field lines emanating out, well, the closer to the central point, the shorter the field line. Well, obviously, these are these aren't static. They 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 aren't permanently fit. They do move. They emanate outwards, unless I'm like missing something. Well, what's that? What you got there? Oh, it's just stuff. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> but yeah, you know, they could potentially pick up a, a field line that's that's shorter, and it would yeah. cut huge amounts of time. In fact, it wasn't Bob. It was you. I had this conversation with, and it was about um, your trips when you were in the navy. So you, you end up arriving at port a couple of hours early. Yes, yes, Sorry, yes, a couple yes, of days yes, early, a week yeah. early. It's not, not um, unusual either. It's quite yeah. normal. People expect that. You know? But if, you, if you're following a compass and you're following a magnetic line and you're following a shorter magnetic line, there's every, ex, you know, that's a perfectly reasonable explanation. You're literally following a shorter curved path. I mean, this is all for <laughs> nothing. I think bob sum this up because we had this kind of debate about whether or not we, you was actually any shortcuts it's like well i don't think there are there's just land masses how do you know what's happening in the atlantic but he said well there is based on how we currently navigate and how we currently understand the navigation tools and the magnetism so if we're fo following these curved magnetic lines and we're correcting for the declination you know that's what you're using to vector yeah, yeah. if you actually vectored across the lines in other words ignored them you used a gyroscopic way of traveling. You reference only the gyroscopics yeah. and dead reckon exactly. as the crow flies straight line from one point to another, which was kind of what I was saying. There aren't any shortcuts. Mm. You know, it's it's not like that. It's just where they are and you can travel between them. But because, like I say, we're traveling on these curved lines, you are taking longer routes. Mm. But in terms of what we, what we started this with, if you follow one of the, you know, there's obviously more than one of these lines. If you follow one of the shorter ones closer to the center, you can travel a shorter distance. And this has happened. You've literally experienced this, have you not, Martin? Yeah, yeah. Um, but at first I thought, I put it down to bad weather. I thought, well, why are we getting in two, three days earlier? What stinking weather? Okay, well, that pulled us back. Okay, that'll be yeah, that. But, but, but after a year, no, but no, then after, no, that no, no. like that time the entire way. And, you know, and then the, I, you know the, there's fixed hull speeds and things. Yeah, you do. Um, you know all of that, and you know. But I've literally watched the ship go backwards, Nathan. I, I've been hanging over the over the ass end, looking, and we're going in reverse. The way the, we're going into head weather, and it's pushing us backwards, and we're losing time. And I've checked it as well. We're going backwards. Yeah. Uh, should we turn tail and go against the weather? Yeah. So we'll take turn tail, head uh, say an easterly course uh, out of the layer, try and find lay of land and get out of the wind so we can make some time so that it you know you can literally be static not get out of a 10 mile space in like a day where you're just stuck in it getting through weather so you can't make any time so i put it down to that at first but then when we were going through you know a week of flat car mediterranean weather and still ending up two days early in support then i was like well what is this just normal yeah everything's normal my mother would wait for my father's ship to arrive he'd be due in on the monday he would arrive on the Thursday, or alternatively, he would arrive on the Friday before. It was never on time, ever. And they used to have to make calls from ship to shore, uh, going past, say, Gibraltar. Uh, we'd have a ship to shore call. Um, I'll be in probably by Wednesday, hopefully, and they would arrive a, a day later. 
where they would make that much oh, and you just say oh we made good time made good time what does that mean you had the waves behind you or oh, you hit a vector or something it's so so tricky That's to work out this, so much time though mate. it, they, it works they, the other way doesn't it martin so you've yes. had instances where you've said i'll be i'll be there on friday and then four days later you still haven't yeah. arrived exactly that you've in other words you've picked up a longer you're following a font a longer field it line of perfect sense it makes perfect sense it does yeah, everything's done on the helm. I spent, I got a helmsman's ticket. I've spent about 100, 200 hours just, these to just, I didn't have to do it. I just have to click the autopilot, let let the autopilot take up. But no, it's still like doing it by hand, helm. You just have to follow the compass reading here. So it was at 240, and that was your course. I have to keep it by going a reverse course and keep it at 240. Because you've got to basically, it's not like a car, you go that way to go that way. You go that way to go that way. And you go that way to go that way so it's a bit counterintuitive especially when you're going down a busy shipping lane and there's um giant ferries of twenty thousand ton hurdling towards you oh fucking hell i hope i don't hit it <laughs> we're gonna die so you gotta you know really hold on your nerve but yeah you follow the compass and the bearing if it's twisting and bending and following these uh these curve lines there's no way you would even know and there's no way you could go as the crow flies how can you follow a straight line at sea it would not be possible so yeah it makes it, a it lot would. of sense you, you do it with gyroscopics so you'd have a yeah, gyroscopic yeah, yeah all right so, yeah, that wouldn't be gyroscopic navigation yeah but it's you wouldn't be able to keep a straight 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 narrow everything's moving the you've got the tide moving um rip tides you've got the different currents that'll pull you which way left right and center they're all mapped out on sea charts you've got to watch the currents you've got to ride them okay i mean i won't disagree you know far more about this but if you put, if we take that out of the equation and just say let's pretend it's just done with flights and okay. everything's always calm always obviously this is best case scenario you've still got hmm. distances between land masses that have got a straight line between them and there are ways yeah. of following that straight line Therefore, Rotter, Rotterdam to New York, two thousand three hundred miles. You sail there, though. <laughs> it's not not the same as two thousand three hundred miles of the same distance from Istanbul to to London, which is the same distance as across the Atlantic. Yet they are both the same distance, but they're not in a straight line. So you've got to come up the Mediterranean through the Gibraltar Straits, up across the Baby Gate, up the English Channel, and up Medway into London. So it's like much much longer journey. It's a two week journey. 14 day journey that was so you know you're thinking it's the same distance as a crow flies straight across but you know obviously if you're on a ball that would increase the distance because of that um make-believe curve that is not really there on the atlantic ocean <laughs> but, that, but that curve is still definitely what people are following they're yeah. following a curve they're having to correct for it you know yeah. they're having to correct for magnetic declination as they, yeah. as they move around it according to their brains on the ball mm -hmm. They're not. And imagine how much fuel would be saved, how much time would be saved okay. if everyone flew as flew, if everyone travelled as the crow flies in straight lines. It would save it a mass, massive amount of money. But just to perpetuate the deception of the globe, they're more than content to have people travel at much, much greater distances. And when you know that, the, the flight from Chile, who cares? They, they think they wouldn't fudge that. Of course. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, early on, when I was early on in the flat earthers, when Tiger Dam was around and all that, when he when he basically brought that post out about um, crossing from Santiago, Chile to um, Australia, and he, he was saying that loads of people take this flight. Well, he was looking at exactly the same flight rosters as I'd been investigating. I'd gone through Qantas. I'd gone. I'd gone through them all, and there was only one or two of these flights. All of them, dozens of of a. Uh, flight companies i thought that was unusual um try and you know arrange a holiday or something in antarctica through and through a travel agent impossibility too so um i'm looking at these same pages he's brought up on his video i'm thinking well okay you're looking at that i'm looking at this okay and then he'll give you the distance the time it arrives up and i'm thinking well how difficult would it be just to stick that flight in on a fucking roster who's at that airport to actually chest this is actually there there is no one so i'm just going whatever this machine presents to me so uh, even back then a year ago when i was trying to find these um these flights i was finding them really anomalous then max tegman gets a flight from chile santiago to i think it was australia the other way anyway melbourne to santiago now 
halfway across the Pacific, apparently, it takes out its compass. Now, what happens to the compass? It does one. It's not doing anything it's supposed to. It's not even pointing in the right direction of where he thinks he's going. So, what happened there? So, Max Egan had a he had his playing compass, so he had the visual display yeah. on the screen for yeah, him to the display, yeah. yeah. And he's got his actual compass in front of him and they don't match at all and when cross-referenced by bob on globusters when this was pointed out it was <laughs> it was confirming the layout of the flat earth map I and disagreeing with the globe and max's argument was well that's just one thing it's not been confirmed it's been done once and bob's reply was no it just adds to the preponderance of evidence it does. It it's like he proved it for us. It's like, you know, he does that. Oh, thank God he took that compass out because he done us a big favour there. He proved there's something really dodgy going on. And if there is, well, there are them flights because he was on one, but mid-Pacific. But, you know, for him to go up that way and invest the money anyway on just debunking flat earth, it must have really got under his skin. <laughs> something must have. Yeah, we had the same on the sun tracking. Tim Osman joined us and confirmed Bob's sunset, I think it was. It's like, oh, yeah. thanks, Tim. <laughs> well done, mate. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Not like him, is it? He was in chat last night. I seen him in. Um, I was having a little nose. They were having a good discussion last night. I was listening to a half hour of free chat. And uh, Poncho Peacock, I think. I haven't listened to him. He, he's, uh, he cracks me up. He's a proper British bloke, isn't he? Gotta love it. Hi, guys in chat. Everybody okay today? Everyone feeling happy and joyful on this sunny afternoon i think they were yeah or oh, sydney to santiago confirmed 13 hours yeah that sounds that sounds about right uh sydney to la 12 hours oh, two hours less uh, it seems like a lot more distance to me hmm, i don't know none of it actually rings true none of it and the more you dig into it the more it all falls apart and you can just sort of see it you can see what they're doing you can see that it's wrong you can see that they're just they're just permeating this milk globe myth. It's unbelievable. Jaron well, says this loads. If you don't understand how deception works, you'll just go to the first debunking that you exactly. find and go, well, there you go, it's been debunked. And, you know, the same applies to the vaxxed thing. I don't know if you've watched the, that, that yet. You may not be as interested as I am because obviously... What I'm is it? Vaxxed. So vaxxed... Oh, I've seen the site. Yeah, I haven't, no, I haven't looked at that. No. Well, it's freely available now on YouTube. And the reason is because yeah. the, the doctor has been discredited. So obviously that you know it doesn't matter because most people don't understand how deception works. They'll just go and go, ah, this doctor's not what he's cracked up to be. This is obviously rubbish when they do a little bit of investigation into it. And that's good enough for them to care not uh, care less about having it out on the internet or being available. But there was a point when he was, you know, legit, if you want to call it that in quotations, um, that you couldn't see it, you know, that it would get taken down immediately from YouTube if anybody mirrored it or put it up. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, it's it's an interesting one because most people don't understand how deception works. So they'll see a debunking, they'll go to the first flat earth debunked video, watch some boat go over the horizon and go, yeah, it's still a globe. These idiots don't know what they're talking about. It's like, well, yeah, you, you don't understand how deception works. Obviously, if you're trying to convince somebody of a lie, you're gonna put measures in place to lie, to convince them of what you said originally. It's reached the point with the globe where that lie is getting more and more out of hand. Like any lie, it's a web, and the web gets more and more fragile the more you add to it. The bigger it becomes, the more likely it is to fall apart. And they've had to pile bullshit on bullshit for years. And it's now reached the point where some of the stuff is sticking out like a sore thumb, and that's where we come in. Yeah, yeah, it is getting really weak, isn't it? Exactly that. <laughs> and they're still holding it together and still going strong. It's really weird, isn't it? And future plans for uh, Elon Musk for Mars. <laughs> right, TV. okay. All TV, it's nothing I know. else. I know, Everything but when you get, get, they've done it for years. Even when you get to the time, it doesn't arrive. It's like, I've always been, where's the fucking space lift? Now, I see NASA, they were in, you know, offering a couple of hundred thousand for any university that could come up with a space lift and, um, apparently, then they discovered these nanocarbon tube fibers that are yeah, really expensive, but you can get it up there. And apparently, the plans were um, it was supposed to be up there by about 1999, um, off the top of an Andean mountain uh, to an outer um, orbit hotel, um, airport, space station thing. 
by 1999. Now, that's what I was led to believe through the 1980s, um, that this was just on the horizon. Wow, the space lift. My friend even discussed it with me. Oh, I had a dream last night. Me, you, and my son Matthew went on the space lift. Really? Oh, wow, I can't wait for that. I mean, oh. my, my message is going to change probably going into 2017, which is, is, yeah, obviously the Earth is flat. We all know this now. We've kind of, the fear of the globe is gone because it's dead. So nobody's, no flat Earth is even slightly concerned about somebody coming along and proving the globe. It's just never going to happen. Um, but moving forward, I still see people engaged in this this paradigm all the time. And I'm disengaged from TV and a lot happier for it. So that's what I'm going to promote going forward. Because Thank the analogy I can give is you're walking down, you're happy as Larry, you've got a beautiful woman on your side, you've parked your Bentley, you walk down the beachfront and it's beautiful. You're looking out at the flat earth horizon, you're looking at the sun going down. Suddenly you see a guy there and he's got a little stage performance, right? And he's doing a, a, a magic trick. You know, he's pulling I don't know, flowers out of his sleeve and yeah. telling you that he's made these flowers appear from nothing, right? And you go up, and this is what we're doing now. You go, they came from your sleeve. We saw, yeah? And he goes, <laughs> yeah. no, 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 I can prove I'm, I'm magic. Watch this other trick. Yeah, yeah. And you Another stand word. there, you stay there, and you go, no, 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 the card had a bend in it. And then he does another trick. And you go, no, 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 you had a false finger on. That's where the, the <laughs> handkerchief's on. And you stand there all day long. And eventually, oh, other yeah, people yeah. crowd around. And they all go, no, 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 he's magic. And you go, no, no, look, he's got a false finger. He's, it's up his sleeve. And then you start shouting about, look, look, it's all false. It's all rubbish. It's lies. It's like, what are we doing? What are we doing? Why are we standing around pointing at the stage show and shouting at everybody else going, look how fake it is. It's just going to be a brilliant idea. I have thought it before. I'm going to do it. I'm going to fucking do it. Let me just get in. <laughs> so why are we standing looking at the stage show? Why are we looking and shouting at everybody else going, look at the ISS, look at these fakeities. Look, look, there's a continuity error in the stage. Yeah, show. we know it. And we could walk on down the beach. Just carry on walking. The idiots yeah. that carry on looking at the stage show, right. if you believe it, make good for you. I'm not interested anymore in pointing out the nonsense of your stage show because this is obvious stage show. And our stage show is television. That's it. Mm. It's a mm. platform that we all know and love. We all engage with it. I've disengaged from it. And now the obvious nature of, well, that's on a television screen. What do you mean, proof? That's on a television screen. You could say about every single thing they present. Any hoax? Well, that's on a TV screen. It's not proof. Yeah, well, I, I don't find the television as engaging as the flat earthers for a start up or as exciting or as anything. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just nonsensical nonsense. But um, I was thinking, um, when I was a teenager, or when I used to live in London, they, I used to go and visit Poets uh, Speaker's Corner in Hyde Park. Now, you can get like guys there possessed by the devil. <laughs> you can get guys there, honestly, you can get guys there, communists, Nazis, you get all sorts of different nationalities, and they all just speak their bit and stacks of people gathered round. So I thought, well, that's not too bad. I could do that. Um, so I took that sort of idea to Cardiff with um, my own little presentation of Azzy Muckles and explained it to the people. Um, wow. would, they, would they think um, I was um, a mental case um, if I put it really across well and get my points and get engaged? Because I could do that. Um, I've done it before. So I get them engaged and get them scratching their head and then you know, get to go and get on Google. Uh, I reckon, uh, yeah, yeah. I would film it for sure, and I would have no problem whatsoever with uh, doing that. That would be well within my means uh, to do that. I wouldn't care. Um, you know, what's the worst thing that a copper could come over and say, stop doing that there, mate, fuck off. Uh, that's about the worst of it, I think. There's not much they could do. I'm only talking. No, they'll have, they have clown acts. They have all sorts of street entertainment in uh, the main streets of Cali all day long, so I don't see a problem, and I could do that. So I want to start doing things like that, get more vocal, more out there. And apart from it makes for you know, good entertaining videos, it's getting... I noticed when I had, we had the last meet, Nathan, okay, in Cardiff, we, me, Noonsflower, and Tim, Psychedelic Christian, were sitting around the table, and um, Ian Cox, we were just talking, just like this, flat earth stuff. And people were hanging on our every word. I noticed the tables around. I thought you're listening to everything, wondering what the hell we're talking about. And they were like, 
you know you could see the anticipation on their faces of what are we going to come up with next and i, I was doing it all and more because i, I realized we, we, everyone was just year waking us so um i thought if you could just expand upon that get more people out there meeting and talking like this then more people are going to hear it and more people are going to know and it would not take long that way to spill out into the consciousness not that i think we need a hand and as you said nasa proves to the cows come home is not doing it for me either because i already know uh, all of these errors is just so easy to see through the light for us i know so easy childish I must admit, Martin, I'm, getting, I'm more and more surprised the more I'm talking about that Earth, how receptive people are. It's not yeah. as I as I expect when you're on the, the street, so to speak, talking about it. Um, people are 50% receptive. 50% of them will brace against it really strongly, and 50% of them will be not immediately converted, but kind of go, really? Well, what makes you think that? And, and I think they react differently out, out in the outside world than they would if it was, say, presented on a telly. Then they'd be like, online. oh, this is fucking rubbish. Yeah, online. But outside, they're like, oh, right, this is interesting. I'm outside. Everyone else is listening. It's a nice day or whatever. You, um, I'll get engaged with it. I, I think there's more, you know, more more appeal as well. I want to do it. I want to get out there and start, you know. I mean, there's, there's people out there, I'm not going to mention any names, <coughs> John Lebon, that will mm. have a sort of 1990s attitude towards their internet engagements with people you know i've seen him calling bob all sorts of names in comments because there's a million miles of fiber attitude towards the internet you know these people aren't real they're just a little screen um you know it doesn't really matter but that's kind of old-fashioned it is <laughs> as an attitude at least yeah. i think so it is it's still 95 it is nobody does that but i noticed disney's made a new film called troll have you seen this and that's yeah. them yeah, yeah. Very loud. Mocking, mocking again <laughs> yeah it's a good laugh mm. for them. when you see it i think oh for fuck's sake really they, they keep seeming to respond all the time to the things that we do i don't know it seems classical but it, it is it's just really strange um but did you see um orphan winfrey with that woman presenting the mercator maps as being false on american primetime television in front of the entire american public you know 20 million or whatever so uh, they are feeding these ideas into the masses. She's having on Orphan Winfrey, and she's uh, one of the biggest players of the whole game, isn't she? So why would they tell people the Mercators were false, I wonder? Well, it's the same. If there's a, a proportion of the people who are watching, the viewing audience, who are engaged by this, it's back to the stage show. So for every person who's heckling, saying, I don't believe your trick, Mm. Well, that's wonderful for the magician. It's just another opportunity to do another trick. Well, if you pull it apart, well, that's brilliant. That's just another opportunity. And so it goes on. Uh, um, I tell you who is a flat earther is um, Whoopi, Gold Gold Whoopi Goldberg, the one um, out of Star Trek, Next uh, next Generation. Ah, Star Trek. She's a movie star. As well, as well, a comedy star. But I remember her most from that. But I'm thinking she's in Star Trek and she's definitely a flat earther because she said on an interview, didn't she? She just came out with it all. And this was 10, 10 years ago or something, you know, eight years ago it was, eight years ago. So how do people in the mainstream know this? So I got the thinking, oh, well, is it the fact that the higher up the um, establishment you get if you're like a cell superstar or if you're a higher whatever politician diplomat that they let you know what's going on the fact that it's flat um but then i seem to think to myself well hang on then if you know it's flat and then it's a creation um and then you know god comes into the aspect as well in the creator and the act or the architect or whatever you want to call it um so that comes into play as well so these people must know this she knew it eight years ago um if Damien Marley's making songs about Flat Earth in 2012, this information was well available on the internet and out there um, years before, at least two years before any of this Flat Earth awakening. I mean, it's never, it's never gone away, away. Martin. It's no, it never hasn't. ever gone away. So, no, and the reason it's never gone away is because it never changed. It always was flat. Yeah, there's been a long-standing deception. But when you mm -hmm. say stuff like, "Well, this was out there," it almost makes it seem like. Well, someone broke the unbreakable bonds of the globe. It's like, no, actually, Martin, the globe is more like a papier-mâché that you can poke through really easily with one finger. So, you know, it doesn't take much to actually 
break the web of lies that they've come up with. So it's going to happen all the time, but that's why they pile on bullshit on top of bullshit all day long, correcting things. Like you, you say they're watching. Well, yeah, they might not necessarily be watching an individual or occasionally watch an individual, but as a whole, they're looking at what they need to correct. They do it in science. They look at literally what part of our mathematical construct doesn't match reality. Let's correct that with maths so that it does match as far as maths is concerned. Job well done. It now matches. It didn't before. We've corrected that with our maths. Well, that's good. That's what science does. That's what they're trained to do. And when they do it, look, this didn't match observable reality, but now I've fixed it. It's like, well, observable reality never changed. Yeah, like the, final, like, like the final model, get the Higgs boson. Oh, and they, they actually, well, they didn't find it, actually. They say they found the Higgs boson. But God they particle. Another yeah, and paradigm. there's Peter Higgs, Peter Higgs crying. Oh, all those years, I was so right, I was so right. Of course, there was a bonding agent, and of course, I was to find it. So we had a little cry, it was really emotional, not. Um, but then a week or two later, they were, you know, having meetings saying, well, it, it's the signs of a Higgs boson. So not really, no. Do you, you know, buy any, do you buy any of the dots and lines from CERN? Um, the, it's the biggest investment ever. Uh, more money spent on that than anything else ever. You know, Atlas, Ooh. Alice. Sounds familiar. Really, yeah. I, I, yeah um, I'm one, like, uh, are they really chucking particles and banging them just so the speed of light just to see what they hit off to get the fundamental particles? Well, that seems a giant investment for fuck off. Uh, are they antimatter antimatter harvested? Well, yeah, they've got a little antimatter tra tra uh, traps, but they're only producing milligrams. And they use them for um, scan machines in hospitals. So, what else could they be doing um, for that investment? They've had this technology for years. They've had particle colliders forever. They've had to, they had they've had to, they got one in the Louvre. There's a fucking particle accelerator in the Louvre. They got them in Caltech. The first one was in Caltech. They got a, a straight one in uh, Chicago, just a straight line one. Um, this yeah, one's special. Better. This one's yeah. special. It's big. Oh yeah, it's, it's, and it's going to get bigger, a lot bigger. It's going to get about eight times the size. It's going to be sixty-eight miles. Wow. Seven, Fourteen. Oh. Therefore, they can find God. Yeah, exactly. And they're bullshit. Higgs fucking boson, which is, by the way, uh, Einstein's universal constant, which, by the way, is just bullshit and covering up oh, the ether. <laughs> I got Victorian science books there in the eighteen eighties, and you know they talk about gravity um, as a as a, a mysterious force um and they talk about the ether everything is ether related but you know obviously when they have to shift the scientific model because of uh, einstein and you know quantum mechanics coming up and everything else to fit it no i've been into quantum mechanics for years nathan but like i'm sort of the what's got me worried about it is the since i watched that mig max video uh, with physicists talking about the properties of light protons uh, and they're basically massless packets, they tell you, of energy that travel from that, what they tell you is a star, but it's a fiery ball or whatever, could be cold or we know, um, 186,000 miles a second to land at my retina um, in what they say is eight minutes from its source. Okay, I'll sit and think about that for a second. So um, if light is apparently a wave and it's turning into a particle, how did that exactly get to my retina? Um, and then you try to work out the wave function. It doesn't work with light. I got problems with uh, basically part wave particle duality, and light doesn't work. So there's something else going on. Again, well, they, they love working that in as part of the fear porn, don't they? So you've they got Nick deGrasse Tyson, and when they describe what you've just described, you described it, and it's quite benign. You know, it's re the uh, the light takes eight minutes; it reaches your eyes. Fairly benign. When Neil deGrasse Tyson de details that talks about so if the sun exploded and we didn't have a sun anymore seven minutes later you wouldn't you wouldn't you wouldn't know it would still be there you'd see it, even though it vanished into existence and we we're all about to die yeah and more more yeah it's gonna go red dwarf oh it's oh beetlejuice which is in the belt of orion by the way oh that star is that's gonna go supernova and take us out if a gamma ray way uh, gamma burst don't have us first but by the way our local star the sun is gonna go red giant and it's going to basically encompass the whole inner solar system and eat earth by the way so which yeah, is now, first is this now, when now dig out your telescope <laughs> oh, on. is this before or after andromeda galaxy cascades with the milky way and they do a cosmic dance oh god well, to be fair martin you are talking about millennia in terms of you know i know, but like, I 
you know. But, but, the way still, just... but, but, but you're right, though. In every explanation, so in that one, you've got Andromeda colliding and we all die. With yep. the sun turning into a red dwarf, it will consume Earth and we will all die. Die. <laughs> you know, it's but, always about so we're we going to get one wiped one out. To find an, uh, an Earth point two. Um, or we're doomed to be because basically um, we've like trashed this planet with pollution and everything else and as really? you know it was fuck quick, quick we better better pump some money off. into nasa <laughs> we need more money we need, we need more, more money. money we need two we're rockets field, no Martin. we need to escape yeah please we need more than six people NASA. NASA. we better NASA. escape this hellhole that we've been left with because we've destroyed it yeah but you know i only walk 10 minutes that way and i'm in a beautiful clean air and countryside so it's not as bad as you might think <laughs> <laughs> like you said yesterday, um, I was listening to a conversation about basically gun crime in America, and it seems to be pretty normal for the average American, which I find fascinating. I really find it fascinating. Um, and Poncho Peter stated, you know, for a British person, this is such an alien thought to live in that sort of world. Uh, thank God that we haven't got that world. And it is. It's, it's a lucky place to be where you haven't got to think about, you know, machine gun battles of an evening. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I like this country, it's a nice place to be. I won't it lie. Is. It yeah. is. It's beautiful here. And when you hear the the horror that's programmed into you when it comes to the heliocentric model from people like Neil deGrasse Tyson, there is no need for every example about how their crappy model doesn't work to end in us dying or being consumed. <laughs> well, you can link that, that, link all of that porn, fear porn, with a nuclear porn, um, war porn, plague porn, and straw man. And the fact that, like, I've been on a bus like this, hands in the air, literally crying um, over something that they've said on the news. Um, and I've been so worried about, like, either income tax or how am I going to manage now? And what am I going to do now? And it's only, and none of it ever materialized. It was just something that they triggered in me in the morning on the news, depressed my ass, a morning fucking breakfast telly on the way to work. And I would, like, have literally a breakdown on a bus. You know, oh, I can't cope with the pressure of modern life. How am I supposed to pay these things? How am I ever going to get on? All fucking bullshit. I can't believe I even played that. I can't even believe I even worried. Um, them again, programming, free from all that now, you know? Yeah. And they'd love you a part of that system. Yeah, if you can't pay well, then come to us. We'll help you pay. We'll give you some of the money you invested in your taxes back to you so you can pay your way. Just mm. keep signing here. Just keep doing this. Just keep doing that. Mm. And, and the average Britain works 100 and 52 days a year for nothing <laughs> four months a year for taxes and the rest of the time you get that many but then three quarters of that are taken off you for taxes so what i actually left with at the end of it all is is pittance it's fucking surfed and money <laughs> there's nothing left it's crazy but obviously the people in the higher establishment don't have to play that game because they got tax loops and everything else and they all look after one another so everyone has all their money the higher up you are um yeah. politicians i, I think it's it's more than that martin i think it's inconsequential i think yeah it is they they undoubtedly understand what money is and it's not mm. an important thing it's just no, part it's of not the existent. System. so for them it's kind of inconsequential it doesn't actually mean anything no it doesn't they're only there to impose the rule and over what they do to us and just keep it all going um, generation after generation, these people have bred the same way to do the same thing to keep us this way. Uh, everyone asleep in the masses, everyone. But not now, not now. <laughs> this is the greatest awakening in humanity, I believe. I really do believe that. I think the greatest awakening in humanity, get my words around it, could be pro progressed so much faster if people just switched off their televisions. That's all it is. That's all it is. And the newspapers this morning, I went to buy some milk. I walk, I look at the newspapers and, and it's like the overview of just reading the tabloids. It's like, it, it hits you in the face. It's rape. It's it's gangbangs. It's murder. It's things fucking exploding. But yeah, I can walk across the roads and the birds are tweeting. <laughs> nice day. It's just fucking really in your face. And it's all like sexual deprivation. It's uh, things dying. Things just... Decay. Yeah, and we're so having to, be, you know, give our pity and sympathy for the Kardashians being robbed, and well, that's, how we get out. that's news. It's like, did you see um, Lily Allen yesterday? You know Lily Allen. Well, she wasn't smiling yesterday, Nathan. She was uh, all over the, the news. What's the score with Lily Allen? What's the um, score? Well, she done a publicity stunt yeah yesterday where they took her to the jungle or what was previously Songat in Calais, the jungle, the uh, con concentration camp. <laughs> the refugee camp 
in the Songat, just outside of uh, Cali. So she has a walk around the jungle, and it's a shanty town. It's a giant place, I don't know, 30,000, something like that there. And she breaks down her all the despair and the illness, and she's crying right the way through this little BBC production video they made for Songat. But the thing is, is they had Brexit to stop all of them coming here, but they, um, because of Lily Allen, they've used her as a, a PR agent to agree to bring a load of children from the um, the camp to Britain. So they so it's a it's a it's a sympathy clause that they've used Lily Allen uh, because she got the youth and she's got music, um, and she you know she'd be on Glastonbury this year now because of that, um, so that people can basically feel the sympathy and won't play up when these shitload of children from the jungle arrive on our shores after Brexit when we said no more. That's what that's about. That's what I worked out from that just that news clip, which is exactly what's going on. Me meaningless what what's actually told is gonna happen. No, 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 the real agenda is what's that that's what exactly what it is. Because she's a player, the father was too. He's, so, he's so knowing, this, knowing that regardless of how you vote, regardless of how much you stamp your feet, regardless of your petitioning, it mean it means nothing. It will go oh, ahead yeah. however they have decided. So the only way to, to is to say, I'm out. I just I don't want to engage in this anymore. That is pointless. You're going to do whatever you want, regardless. So why engage with it? You know, eventually, if everyone disengaged from that, it would, it would reach a point where they were just doing it on their own, and everyone else. Then again, I'm almost describing the 1984 situation and yeah, turning it all into brawls. Yeah, well, that's that's eventually, you know. But um, yeah, I I think I don't want to insult the um anonymous movement, but I when I watch videos of them and they're in London or in in a demonstration and they've all got this um Viva Vendetta Guy Fawkes mask on, which when you work out what the bullshit of Guy Fawkes that becomes meaningless. Um, well, it certainly does I, when Russell Brand reveals himself in the middle of it. This, I was just going to get there. Yeah, I, most of brands, exactly that's my point. So, um, and then they're facing on with the police. So um, they're debating them. And, and I, I think to myself, I'm, I'm watching them. I'm thinking, okay, you've been doing that all these years. And what exactly have you achieved? Well, you've made a few million hits and you've got a lot of videos, but what has changed in the world? Nothing, it's just got fucking worse. They've clamped it down more. Um, and all you lot have, you know, been watched and fucking a lot of you gone to jail um yeah it's it's not achieved anything the way they played it i've noticed so it needs to be more canny it needs to be um more thought out well <laughs> not that you can drive don't you think it's just all contrived they did the same with occupy wall street they had that you know they had all them camped out then they would send these paid um people to go in and start riots and kick off to give all the rest of them bad name now i've seen this before i've seen it in the Ely riots where i live um there was 1,000 the first night, 3,000 by the second. By the third night, there was basically a football terrorist, uh, terrorist, football terrorist, full of um, football hooligans from all over the country, all like Zeke Heilin, and, and doing choruses. And I thought, well, where the hell have these lot come from? They just turn up on trains and buses. No, no, they, they're sent there to, because it was on the news, to, you know, make it look... 10 times worse than what it was. Now, I've seen that all over. I've seen it in um, I've seen it in Glastonbury. I've seen it in Stonehenge when the police turned up and battered everyone. Um, televised, that was the most outrageous thing I have seen. Um, that put an end to freedom for uh, most of Britain that day, that day. Which everything changed after that. That summer was the last I seen. Before then, um, I, I literally felt, well, free in the summers I did. You know, you could do things free not actually worry about the establishment or having to you know just make do and get by in the way they make you uh, i could i didn't have to do it I, I i sort of went off off grid and lived with a convoy in different places like the forest of savanac for a little while <laughs> i ended up for a couple of weeks that was interesting but um yeah it's, it's hard to play this game and have to be forced to and know what's going on especially with uh, the way they set it up straw man wise and i hate it <laughs> it's really tough. i can't help it Nathan. i'm a fucking anarchist i must be it must be my soul i don't know what it is but for for every anarchist living in a house you've still got to to a certain extent engage with the system so you've got to know the rules you know, oh no i i can engage and i will be nicer than most people like who are global people and most people around me in society i behave uh, better behaved and i'm 
quite badly behaved, it says a lot. Um, and I interact really well with the outside world and they respond really well to me. So um, that's not an issue with me. It's something else. <laughs> well, we're kindred spirits in that respect. We don't like yeah. it very much. Rules no. don't sit well. No, I really can't be told what to do either. I, it's like um, it's like a form of mental illness for me. As soon as somebody starts dictating or saying anything to me, I got this like, little psychopath that goes off in my head and says, "Tell him to fuck off." Well, Martin, do you want to wrap up with that? Yeah, name day ahead of you? I have. I got a great day ahead of me. Listen, to everyone in chat, thanks for coming in. There'll be more morning coffees coming up, okay? Because I get a few hours in the morning, um, and I can have chats and um, more hangouts to come, and um, and more stuff to come. I'll, I'll have a hangout this week as well. Oh, no, not this week. On the weekend, maybe. Find some time. <laughs> okay, guys. Thanks. God bless you all. Nathan, what are you up to later? With Max Adams, is it? Hopefully, if he gets his camera sorted, I'll do it. It okay. won't be very long, maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes, just talking about statistics. Not just, very important. So, yeah, Mark Sargent okay. himself later on this evening. Or it might be a different day if he can't sort his camera out. Oh, you're sorted out. Mark Sargent, you have a camera. I'll be disappointed otherwise. I'm going to watch this Merchant Marine thing this afternoon anyway. I'm quite intrigued to what this uh, Merchant Seaman has to say, I've got to be honest. Yeah, like I say, it's good. Jungler. I've watched the last of it. Thank you very much for having me, Martin. It was a brilliant morning coffee. Hopefully, yeah, you'll have it again. Yeah, nice, nice brunch. Thank you, Nathan. We must do this again sometime. For sure. All right. God bless. Thank you, brother. All right, thanks, thanks for all the chat. See you all yeah, soon. Yeah, thanks for coming, guys. We'll see you all later. I come and I come and catch come catch you later, guys, and hang wrong with you all. All right. God bless. Bye. <laughs>